Biodiversity is not evenly distributed throughout the land and sea, but a large part is concentrated in a relatively small number of habitats scattered around the globe, but with a clear dominance in the tropical areas. Thus it is estimated that more than a third of the known plants and land vertebrates are confined to areas that cover less than 2% of the globe's surface. These places are known as hot points of high diversity. In a way, they are large shelters and reserves of nature. Its current critical state has made scientists and naturalists place them on the first line of battle for environmental preservation. Rescuing them and preserving them should be, at least, the necessary condition for a global strategy in defense of biodiversity although it really is not enough. It's, I think it's a useful um, tool for organizing efforts to protect biological diversity. Um, one of my concerns is if we rely on it too heavily and don't deal with the causal factors like population growth, like climate change, that in the end we may not succeed. Um, for example, um, there, there are places in Africa where uh, efforts are made to set aside parks and preserves. But if population continues to grow and people get hungry or their cattle are starving, it's almost impossible to keep them from, from invading these preserves. In fact, they're doing that now. Uh, you can't just shoot people because they want to survive in a sense. So, um, unless we deal with population growth, which is the, the driving force here, then putting fences around things in Africa and calling them parks or wildlife preserves probably will not work in the end. Costa Rica is one of these privileged places of biodiversity. In barely 51,000 square kilometers, 5% of all species living on Earth are found. Costa Rica also represents a ray of hope. Before it was too late, the Costa Rican government stopped the destruction of the natural environment and created a broad network of national parks. In fact, today it is the country with the most protected soil in the world which accounts for 25% of its territory. In Costa Rica, however, the major difference lies in the fact that the local populations have become involved in the preservation and research of these lands. Thanks to the programs of the National Institute of Biodiversity, the inhabitants of the towns work to collect species that are later investigated and cataloged by scientists around the world. Many of these scientists work for the pharmaceutical industries. The lesson learned from places like Costa Rica is obvious and conclusive for naturalists. Living off the forest does not mean destroying it because wood is just one of the hundreds of renewable resources that the forest provides. Whales, panda bears, rhinoceroses, the Asian elephant, and the American puma are some species that are unfortunately famous. The danger of their extinction has turned them into the most popular campaign device used to defend the environment. These animals, however, are doomed to become extinct, and there's no solution. And just like them, 
Thousands of unknown species have no space to live because of mankind. But when a species imposes its dominance at the expense of exterminating others, life, sooner or later, will end up suffering a serious backward step. We are the only species able to realize what we are doing. We are also the only species that has a weapon like scientific knowledge to fight destructive ignorance. Everything else depends on whether we are willing to come to terms with what is at stake and recognize who the real losers are. Well, we, we more or less stand at a crossroads now and what we do in the next five to ten years will determine what the planet looks like a hundred years from now. If we take one road, which is the road of neglect, it is very likely that diversity will be severely eroded over the next hundred years. So if we do nothing, we will have much less rainforest, much less in the way of, of large animal diversity, much more in the way of prominence of those organisms that do well with where people are, foxes, rats, um, things like that, cockroaches. On the other hand, we do have the capacity to live a life of stewardship, if you will, that will ensure that your grandchildren and my grandchildren will still be able to see elephants and rhinoceros in Africa, that there will still be substantial amounts of rainforest in South America. We are the first generation whose actions can quite literally shape the world in which future generations will live. No generation before us has had the capacity to alter the Earth's climate, to uh, uh, cause the sixth great extinction. All the earlier extinctions going back over hundreds of millions of years were caused when a huge meteor collided with the Earth or something of that sort. But here it's not a meteor colliding with the Earth, it's, it's us and our demands colliding with the capacity of the Earth to satisfy those demands.